Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we're doing Einstein Analytics Dataflow Basics Part 7, where we're going to learn how to enable record linkout functionality and action framework on our data sets. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, uh, it's important to point out that I actually recorded it about a year ago when I was doing the original Dataflow Basics series, and I have no idea why I didn't choose to include it in that one. I think the reasoning was that it wasn't really Dataflow based, but it is still managing our data sets through the data manager. Uh, so not sure why it ended up on the cutting room floor, but uh, it's still pretty relevant content with the exception that Wave Labs has been disabled and uh, a lot of the different things that you're seeing me do are now going to be addressed through data set fields. Uh, so to get to data set fields, uh, you just want to open up any data set and that's going to be right in this fields button here and uh, all the different configurational changes that I make can be done from this screen. Uh, other than that, uh, there are some subtle differences in the UI and uh, you know now I have a new microphone so the recording quality is a little different than it was a year ago, but I decided, eh, what the heck, we'll include the video. So back in the day we used to have to do this uh, with the XMD, either by manually editing the JSON or by uh, using Wave Labs. And uh, I do need to make a quick uh, disclaimer statement about Wave Labs. Um, it is not technically officially part of the product. Um, you know, it's put out by Salesforce Labs, so it's about as close as you can get to official, but it is not technically official, which means that, uh, you know, if it breaks something, um, you know, support is not necessarily going to assist you uh, if you log a ticket, and uh, it, it could go away at any time. That said, I use it constantly, and it's awesome. And it's also, you know, it's bittersweet because I do like seeing this functionality come into the product proper. And at the same time, I'm also going to be sad to see uh, uh, Wave Labs go away. So let's look at how we can now, uh, through the Analytics Studio, enable record link out and uh, action framework on our data sets. Now we can do this two ways. We can either go to the data sets tab, which gives us a list of all of our data sets, or we can, from the data manager, Go to the data sets tab, which gives us a list of all of our data sets. Uh, so let's pick one. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There's actually a really good reason why there uh, are two different versions of just lists of data sets. From here, you have the ability to edit a data set, create a recipe, delete the data set, and clicking on the data set will by default uh, try to you know create a new recipe. By contrast, in the Analytics Studio, your option is only going to be to edit, and clicking on it will explore it. So let's look at what the edit options are. From here, uh, it's going to be exactly the same regardless of where you get to it from. Uh, so one thing to call out, you can download the XMD from here and actually see uh, how the code gets updated based on the changes that we are going to make. But what we really need to do is come down here and click on our Configure Actions button. So let's take a look at how this works. We're going to click on the account.name field. And first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to give it a record ID because the system has no way of knowing which column in your data set actually contains the ID for the record that you want to look at. And you might think, oh, well, account.name, I, I clearly want the column that starts with 001 because that's the object prefix for account. No, it doesn't know that because maybe you've also got link out functionality on, you know, owner name and, uh, you know, some other lookup that you got. You know, who knows? So you, you have to declare an ID column so it knows what Salesforce record you're actually talking about. Display fields, we're going to skip over for the moment. We will be coming back to this. Uh, let's go down here and see what this open Salesforce record checkbox gives us. Now, by default, it's going to say like, hey, you want to open the Salesforce record? And if we just hit save right now, that's good enough and we will be able to link out to our record. Uh, we also have the option of linking to a record in a different org. That's if you have an org to org connector set up. Uh, and we also have the ability to go to a specific URL. So we can hard code in a domain here and then call out uh, with uh, JSON syntax a different field on our data set that's going to contain, you know, the, the rest of the URL. So if you wanted to make a let me Google that for you, uh, this is where you would do this. I've actually uh, used this to call flows uh, from Wave. We also have the ability to pass in a tooltip. So uh, let's take a look at how this is actually going to play out. I'm going to give it a tooltip. tip. 
and we'll switch that back to uh, Salesforce record for the time being. And while we're here, I will show what the perform Salesforce actions does. Now we can choose all or just choose specific actions, but it's going to list off the uh, the actions that are available from account. So you know, post a link, log a call, new account, new case, and these are going to be like your global actions. And uh, I think you can get object specific actions on this. I'm actually not a hundred percent positive. So I'm just going to pick uh, log a call and hit save. So now let's take a look at how this uh, affects our data set. We're going to switch to values table, add the account name field. And we can see that now we've got this uh, drop down carrot for show record actions menu. If we click on that, we're going to see that we have open record. There's the custom tooltip show me my accounts that I typed in. And uh, this is the action that we've chosen to enable. So this uh, is not restricted to only the values table. If we switch over to any visualization and group by account name, we're going to have those same options available to us. Uh, we can put this on any dimension field in our data set as long as we call out a record ID. Now let's switch back and take a look at how the display fields comes into play. So if I was to select account industry instead of account name, I imagine that I could have multiple accounts. So what if I said, well, my record ID field is still account ID and it's got multiple matches. Well, I'm going to display the fields account name and account owner ID. I'm going to set open uh, Salesforce records as an option. And when I hit save and go take a look at my data set, then group by that industry field. I have my caret, but because multiple records have been uh, selected, I get the account name and account owner ID that I told it to include as columns so I can figure out which one of the accounts included in that bar am I actually trying to interact with. And then once I select one, I can open the record in Salesforce. So I couldn't make this video and not cover Wave Labs at all. So I'm logged into wave-labs.herokuapp.com and I've given it access to my uh, Let's Play org. I'm going to select the XMD editor. And then I'm going to choose from uh, one of my data sets here. And these are all the different sections of the XMD that we're able to edit. So uh, derived dimensions and derived measures are going to be anything that you created on a dashboard level with SQL or whatever. But all we really need to look at right now is uh, dimensions. And if we scroll down to account industry and account name, we'll see the options that we had populated. So I've got uh, account ID as my record ID field. The record organization ID field is going to call out uh, which org it's coming from if you have a multi-org connector and uh, record display fields, we'll see that there's values populated for that um, in, the account, uh, in the account industry uh, entry for the XMD. So this is a really powerful tool. Um, I'm really sad to see it go. At the same time, let's get it all in one place. So I really hope uh, that um, eventually we will see a full one-to-one -one uh, XMD modification capabilities that we had in Wave Labs available in the UI. Uh, I don't really see any um, point in the near future where you will be completely free of JSON editing. So that's all I have for tonight. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.